Albert Hoffman first synthesized LSD in 1938 while he was working at Sandos. The acronym stands for Lysoc Sadoethylamide. His starting material was the natural product ergotamine, and most of the structural work has already been done for him by nature, so I think it's more interesting to look at the total synthesis, which was published in 1956. The starting material for this synthesis was a dihydroindole, which bears a benzoate protecting group. You can see the structure is fairly similar to tryptophan. Anyway, the first step was to use thionyl chloride to convert the acid group into an acid chloride. The intermediate pushes a chloride ion which then displaces a molecule of sulfur dioxide overall and a chloride ion and an acid chloride is generated. This is used in the next step where an intramolecular friedel crafts reaction is performed. Aluminium trichloride pulls off a chloride ion and generates an oxonium intermediate. The charge can be delocalized around the ring to this tertiary center which is stable enough and then the deprotonation restores the aromaticity and one of the rings has now been formed. A reaction with molecular bromine under acidic conditions forms an alpha halo ketone in the next step. Fairly simple reaction. And this provides a reactive center to import this amine fragment with latent functionality in the form of this acetal group, which will become important later. As for how that fragment was made, methylamine reacted with the chloro compound is one step, and the chloro compound in turn will have come from acetone, glycol, and chlorine under acidic conditions to get monoaddition. Anyway, a net SN2 displacement of bromide by nitrogen imports all that extra fragment. And now the uh, ketone functionality needs to be revealed from the acetal by deprotection under acidic conditions. A series of protonations and electron pushings leaves this oxonium species, which is apt to be attacked by a molecule of water. Eventually the glycol is pushed off entirely and the ketone is revealed. This becomes important in the next step, where sodium methoxide is used to affect an intramolecular condensation. The enol is formed by the first deprotonation, and then the lower ketone group is attacked by the enolate. It deprotonates again, and then in the workup, there are acidic conditions present. Both the oxygens can be protonated, and the whole thing collapses in a net E1CB reaction to form an enone system. Like so. Next, sodium borohydride is used and acetic anhydride. The first reagent reduces the ketone to an alcohol, and the second protects the nitrogen against the next reaction steps. Thionyl chloride was used to convert the alcohol into a chloride, and the mechanism is pretty similar to the one you saw previously. Anyway, this chloro compound, they need to replace the chlorine with a carbon atom to give the acid group, and they found it was very susceptible to hydrolysis. The only way it turned out to be possible to do this was to use sodium cyanide in liquid hydrogen cyanide as a solvent, which is pretty scary. Anyway, it's what it took to get it to work, and the nitrile group is added. A reaction with methanol under acidic conditions breaks down the nitrile group overall into the methyl ester. You can see a series of protonations and attacks by methanol molecules will eventually push away ammonia and generate the methyl ester like this. Hydrochloric acid is used to convert that to the uh, acid and it also deprotects the acetate group that we added on the nitrogen in the previous step. The only thing left to do is remove two hydrogens here, and heat deactivated rainy nickel with sodium arsenate was used to affect this reaction. So this has completed the synthesis of lysergic acid. It won't have escaped our notice that this center is chiral, and so the final step was a resolution by forming the methyl ester with diazomethane, and then a hydrozone with hydrazine, and a crystallization to resolve the two different enantiomers. To make LSD from this, you'd need a coupling reagent and diethylamide, and Shulgin did this along with probably a lot of others. Uh, the intermediate for this reaction looks fairly similar to the sulfonyl chloride, and again, a chloride ion kicks out some miscellaneous phosphorus, oxygen, chlorine species and generates an acid chloride again. And this reacts with diethylamine, chloride is displaced, and that forms an amide, which is in the top left of the LSD molecule. And so this final step has completed the synthesis of LSD.